اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم افلا یتبرون القرآن ولو کان من عند غیر اللہ لوجد فی حق تلافا کثیرہ صدق اللہ العظیم رب شرحلی صدری و یسر لی امری وحل العقدتم من لسان یفقہ قولی Respected viewers and listeners, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. The verse which I have recited is from Surah An-Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 82. Allah says, أَفَلَا يَتَتَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ Why don't you ponder at Qur'an? وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ Had it been from anyone other than Allah, لَوَجَدُوا فِيهِ اخْتَلَافًا كَثِيرًا you would have found therein much discrepancies, discrepancies, contradictions. This is the test given in the Holy Quran and I'm going to apply this test and I'm going to see that how Bible, Holy Bible fulfills the prophecy. You see, we do not need to go far or uh, you know, start expounding two, three, four, five, six prophecies. I said if one does the job you do not need to go far you see this prophecy i have been asking christians for many years but you know unfortunately i have not found the answer and i know why it is very obvious you see whenever you try to ask questions to these christian missionaries you know impetuously they will reply to you this is that, this is this. You see, when you start reasoning with them, the game is very different. You see, traditionally, pastors are not obliged to entertain their followers. You see, because when the human starts thinking, the pastors start shaking. You see, they really do not have answers to the critical questions on the Bible. So what they do, they try to shun you up with some kind of different ideologies. And that is why they started this apologetics. It was needed. You see, you cannot help yourself without, you know, introducing apologetics to your, you know, pastors, especially these Protestants. You see, I always wonder, how come these all pastors, these healers, you know, the harvestation, these all conventions where do they all they do, you know, miracles and in the name of Jesus Christ, it just this thing happens and this you see that appear, it appears, it appears on the television that the miracles are happening. You see, let me tell my viewers first that the miracles are not the test of any faith. Remember that. Because Jesus Christ said in Matthew chapter 24, verse 24, Lo, you will see that there is Christ. Someone will come and say, I am Christ. Jesus Christ said that you find these things and there shall arise many false Christ and the false prophets. Even to show you many signs and the wonders and the feats. Even my own elective disciples could be deceived or would be deceived by such the miracles and the feats of anti Christ. So this is what Jesus Christ said. So miracles are not the test of any faith. But what is the miracle? You transform nations. This is the miracle from the one lip service of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu You transform the nation. And Jesus Christ said very clearly in the Bible. He said that do men gather grapes from the thorns or figs from the thistles? A good tree will reap the good fruit and the evil tree will reap the evil fruit. By the nation, judge ye by the nation, judge them by the fruits. The little leaven leaveneth the whole. If the little amount of yeast does not ferment the loaf, there is something wrong with your yeast, something wrong with your loaf. Jesus Christ said that. And when he, the spirit of truth, will come, he will guide you into all truth. He shall not speak of himself. Whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he shall tell you many new things to come. And he shall glorify me. 
I said nobody glorified Jesus Christ except Muhammad peace be upon him in the annals of history. Can't you see that? Who glorified Jesus Christ? Who glorified Mary? Prophet Muhammad sallallahu through, through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Either like it or not. You see, it was so easy to ridicule the concept that somebody has born without father. It was so easy for Prophet Muhammad sallallahu And those days, Jews and Jewess, all these were, you know, having a hard kind of confrontation. Arabs and Jews, confrontation, you know, consternation and dissenting ideologies. But that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu was enforced to say that Mary, this Jewess, it was chosen above the women of all nations. It is too heavy to assimilate for Arabs. And it was the best way to bash Prophet Sallam's teachings by those Abu Jahl and Abu Lahab. Can't you see that? There was a divine, you know, commandment from God Almighty. It was imperative that Prophet Muhammad Sallam ought to say these things. Actually, Quran was revealed on him. So he is saying to the rest of the people that this Mary, the mother of Jesus Christ, was chosen above the woman of all nations. And Mary prostrate thyself and bow down in the prayers with those who bow down. This is in the Quran about Mary and Jesus Christ. And he was having the just you know, held in honor in this world. And the hereafter, and he was nearest to the company of God. This is what Quran about Jesus Christ. So easy for Prophet Muhammad to ridicule. But he didn't. You know why? Because it was written down for him from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Iqra, say of Prophet Muhammad sallam, that this is Jesus Christ. This is his mother. Don't try to believe any all other kind of you know, ideologies rattling around in that those eras at time. You have to believe this concept, this point which I am revealing unto thee, O Apostle, through inspiration. You were not with them when they cast lots with the arrows, that whom should be charged in taking care of Mary. Neither you were with them when they cast off the lots. So how you know all these things? It is through wahi, through revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see one prophecy. I have been asking these Christians for many years. How come nobody is talking about that? You see, if you read Luke chapter 1, verse number 30 onwards, the annunciation, the good news of Jesus Christ's birth was given to Mary by angel. You see, according to the Bible, Luke chapter 1, verse number 30 onwards, prophecy has been given. An angel came to Mary. I don't know which angel it was. Archangel Gabriel or Holy Spirit. We usually call Archangel Angel Gabriel. But according to Christian Christians' eschatology, he might be one of the part of the Trinity. That's, that's not the point. The point is, what was the prophecy? And it is the point as they believe that he was the part of Trinity, so he must be God. And God is giving the prophecy which was not fulfilled yet, even now. So, you see it says, Luke chapter 1 verse number 30 onwards. And it is written, An angel came to Mary and said, Mary, fear not. God is going to give you a glad tiding unto thee, the name, the son, whose name shall be called Jesus. This is what the Bible says whose name shall be called Jesus, the son of the most high. You see, the son of the most high is an expression. I don't want to go into that. You know, Bible has so many sons and relationship. Metaphorically, everyone called because Jesus said that in your scriptures, you are called gods. Ye are called gods through whom this, you know, this all ideology came. And you are telling me that I did blasphemy in John chapter 10 verse 30 onwards. Say ye of him whom the father has sanctified and sent out to this world. Thou blasphemous because I say that I am the son of God, which is nothing in your language because you are being called gods directly in book of Psalms. 
in Corinthians, the Satan, Shaitan is called, being called, and devil is the God of this earth. And then Moses and Aaron, ye are gods. And God said to Musa alayhi that behold, I have made you a god to Pharaoh, and your brother Aaron, thy shall be prophet. What is this? So you can see that it's nothing. And if somebody says that Jesus was not having earthly father, then Adam is also mentioned. Same prophecies, these, uh, sorry, what you call genealogies. In Luke, it's mentioned Adam, the son of God. Game is over. Luke chapter 1, verse number 33. So, uh, sorry, Mark. Gene genealogy is mentioned in two places, Matthew and uh, other gospels. So, you can see where it says, and Jesus, uh, sorry, uh, what you call Dave, uh, Adam, the son of God. So I said, stand to reason. Anyways, coming back to prophecy. You see, then it mentioned that, okay, and uh, son of the Most High. And your son, angel is saying to Mary, and your son will take his father's throne. And who was his father? David, the lion, the lineage, David, the lion. You see. His father is on David's throne and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever. You see, which rule was given to Jesus Christ? Which throne was given to Jesus Christ? You see, when he was there and he was running away here and there by those people who, you know, staged all this drama on him, which Allah protected him. It's not the topic. Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor, that pagan, he was sitting on the throne of David instead of Jesus would sit over there. And that guy is interrogating, interrogating him when this Saint Hadrian, all the trial, midnight trial happened and he was interrogating Jesus. When the midnight trial was happening, Pontius Pilate, the pagan, he was interrogating Jesus Christ. And he is asking him the question instead of Jesus would interrogate him or whosoever. Because according to the prophecy, he's supposed to get the father's throne. And his father was David. And David was having earthly throne. Not the throne in the heavens. As you know, some of the pastors impetuously, they give you the answers like that. Without any shame, without any thinking, impetuous behavior. So they want to just get rid of all these things. But it's not easy. You see, Jesus Christ. And when further on, Pontius Pilate asked, when they keep changing the charge, so Pontius Pilate asked thou, the king of the Jews. First in the Saint Hadrian, the charge was the son of God. But when they brought him to Pilate, because Pilate was Grecian, Greek, pagan, he doesn't care about son of God. There were so many sons of God. So he said, I heard that there's a charge on you that you are claiming to be the king of the Jews. So Jesus said that this is what you say. My kingdom is not of this earth. Jesus says my kingdom is not of this earth. What angel said that you will take your father's throne. And David's throne was on this planet, on this earth. He refused even that, that my kingdom is not even on this earth. And he said that I spake openly. Nothing I speak, you know, in the secret congregation or secret meetings or convention, I speak openly. Then why you are smiting me? Why you are hitting me? For what? Did I hide anything? I said everything all along my ministry. Then why are you bringing those false, you know, witnesses over me? So he's defending and he said that it's not what I am, you know, intending for. So why these people don't see this? Second, and he will rule over the <clears throat> house of Jacob forever. <coughs> <coughs> and second, he will rule over the house of Jacob forever. I am asking, who put Jesus Christ on the cross? Those house of Jacob. And Jesus Christ said, my own receive me not. His own, even disciples forsook him and fled away. It says in the Bible, Mark chapter 12, Mark chapter 11, <clears throat> 12, it says clearly, and all of his you know, disciples forsook him and fled away. So they fled away. Second thing, Jesus said, my own receive me not. This house of Jacob, 
they got rid of him even now in Israel they are you know straddling around here and there and they are waiting for their Mashiach and they wrote very clearly with understanding that we got rid of that Jesus Mashiach he was imposter we put him on the cross which later on became the good redemption for Christians it was the good riddance for the Jews later on became redemption for Christian salvation through the Greeks mythology but you see when you start reasoning with them I said which house of Jacob was ever given to Jesus Christ those people according to you killed him on the cross which and prophecy says forever he will rule over the house of Jacob what is the meaning of forever in English the day you born till doomsday even now who is ruling in house of Jacob who is ruling in throne of David Jews the enemy of Jesus who got who killed him on the cross you see where are these prophecies throne of David even now throne of David is not there you know that where is the throne of David it's in Westminster Abbey the royal parliament or the you know called church for you know in England or uh, where they are consecrating when the you know new king or queen comes or they have their you know marital whatever ceremonies they use that throne of David for their for holy consecration and that uh, throne of David after Jesus ascension it was taken by Titus killed every Jew that time and since then their diaspora started and that Titus they took this throne of David from Jerusalem he you know took that throne of David brought to Scotland then to Ireland then to Scotland then to England I said where is that you know throne of David you don't have it where is the ruling nothing happened and what is there left in the prophecy to explain so I'm telling to my you know viewers and listeners if these Christians come and harass you ask them which throne David which throne was given ask them which throne was given to Jesus Christ and he himself is denying that I am not here for that purpose angel said to Mary he will take the throne and he will rule the house of Jacob forever and which house of Jacob forever he ruled that house of Jacob they put him on the cross which you Christians take out redemption and Jews got riddance وآخر الدعوانا عن الحمد لله رب العالمين